Hi, my name is Bart Piela. I'm a technical marketing specialist on the deep learning team at Cognex. Today, I want to show you how to set up and use a video read tool on an Insight camera. In terms of my setup here, I have the new D900 camera. And to that, I have the standard Insight cables, so a 24 volt power and IO cable, and also an Ethernet cable, which I've connected back to my laptop. Um, the application we're going to be tackling today is an OCR application, so using our deep learning tools to do optical character recognition. And in this example, I have these business cards with the Cognix logo up top. And I have some embossed characters here that uh, vary a little bit in quality to kind of replicate what you might see on the production floor. So some of these embossed characters are embossed better than others. And so there's uh, quite a bit of variation here that we'll see if deep learning can handle. And then uh, in terms of the rest of my setup, I have my laptop here, which is GPU enabled, which allows me to do deep learning training. And I also have a dongle just like this one. Uh, that's just the security license for the software. So with that, I'll jump right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to just double check my setup. In this case, I already have the camera focused and the image formation set. So I have a good image that I'm happy with. Um, in this application, I'm going to end up using the Cognex logo as a fixture for uh, a region of interest where my OCR will be taking place. So I'm just going to line up this nicely so it's nice and centered. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in my standard train Patmax Redline tool into an empty cell. I'm going to go ahead and set the pattern region to be right in that Cognex logo. I'm going to hit that green checkbox. Now I have a trained pattern. And the next step, I'm going to put down a find Patmax Redline tool. I'm going to go ahead and set the find region to the maximize or maximize my region for the whole ROI of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and link the pattern to the pattern that I previously trained. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my find tolerances a little bit uh, from the default of plus minus 15 to plus minus 30. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to enable my graphics to show result graphics. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to collect uh, some images in my film strip. I'm going to hit this record button, which will allow me to record images to the film strip. And now every time I trigger the camera, uh, I'm going to get an image in the film strip. And so I'll go ahead and trigger the camera uh, just a few times here. A couple on that card. Oops, that one's out of the field of view. And a couple on this card here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that one that I accidentally had the, the card out of the frame. Great. So now that I have some images recorded, I'm going to go ahead and put down my uh, Vidi tool. So if I scroll back up here to my toolbox and open up the Vidi tools, I want the Vidi read tool. And I'll, again, I'll just place that in an empty cell in the spreadsheet. Great. Now what I can do is I can assign a fixture to this Vidi read tool. So if I just double click here, or if I use this uh, insert relative reference, I can point to that patterns tool that I had set up before. I don't need to set, I don't need to point it to X, Y, and angle or to a fixture structure. I can just go ahead and assign it to that uh, patterns cell. The other thing that I want to do is I want to set a region. So I have a fixture, now I need a region. I'm going to go ahead and set my region so that it is centered over my characters. And that should be good enough. Let's get the angle closer. So now I can go ahead, I have everything set up here in my Vidi read tool. I'm going to go ahead and open the Vidi editor. And what this does is it opens a Vidi tab. And if you've used Vidi in the past, you'll see that this looks exactly like the Vidi suite for PC. And so what I can do is I can grab all my images and plop them right into the uh, Vidi pane here. And now, what happened really quickly there was that each image was processed through the through the spreadsheet. And so what you're seeing now is you're seeing that the Patmax fixture has been applied. So the Vidi tool is only ever going to process on the fixtured part of the image where my characters are. 
The other thing to note here is that you can see that the Vidi tool has already gone in and tried to read some characters. That's because it has a pre-trained library that can read characters and digits. So those characters are A through Z and 0 through 9 and some special characters. To make sure I'm getting the best results out of the pre-trained tool, I have to reset my feature size to reflect the characters in my application. So to do that, I can use this bubble down here and just drag it over a character and size it approximately uh, to reflect the size of the characters in my application. Once I've done that, you'll see that that changes the feature size here in the tool parameters, and I can reprocess uh, the images through that tool, and you should expect that the results will be a little bit better when I do this. Now, you can see that Vidi's doing an OK job, but it's certainly not reading all the characters accurately, especially not on these images where uh, there's these really challenging characters. So as part of the training process, what I have to do is I have to label images for Vidi. So there's two ways I can do this, or two ways I can approach this. Uh, one is to do this all by hand manually. The other is to accept views and convert these yellow markings into green labels. I'll show you the manual method first. So again, these yellow markings represent Vidi's predictions for where the characters are and what they are. And I can clear them away by right-clicking and pressing this clear markings and labels. And once that's done, I can go in manually as, as the designer, as the developer, and click on these uh, characters and label them individually. So I'm just going to go through and do that really quickly. And zoom in here with the scroll wheel to make sure I'm doing this accurately. And again, in general, uh, you want to label these characters um, pretty consistently. So I have my box set up such that it basically um, encapsulates my character. And I'm trying to be careful with the angle of that box to make sure um, it's as accurate as it can be. So I'm going to go through and label this image really quickly. And this is my eight. And this over here is my nine. Great. So now all of my uh, characters are labeled. The other thing you'll see is that Vidi applied what's called a string model. And that's this uh, large uh, rectangle around all of my characters. And what a string model is, is it's basically trying to uh, make a line of text out of all of my characters. So you can see that that line of text is reading 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is what I expect. So again, that's the manual way of, or, or the direct way of, of labeling characters. Um, another way I can do this is in this case, I have uh, Vidi's predictions, which are more accurate than the other image, which was, which was a little bit more challenging. And so what I can do, if I right click here, and I press this Accept View button, what that does, what I'm telling Vidi then, in that case, is that I'm accepting those predictions, even though they might not be perfectly accurate. So you can see when I accepted the views, um, or that view, that image, uh, all those yellow graphics got converted to green graphics. And now what I can do is I can go in and, and just double check and adjust as necessary. So instead of doing this all from scratch, um, I'm just fixing the, the current predictions. So that's a four, that's a three. Yep, I agree. Make this five a little bit bigger. Six, and again, I'm trying to be consistent with my labeling. So in this case, Vidi predicted this to be a one when it's really a seven, so I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. And call that a two, even though it's an eight. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. And let's check this, that's a nine, not a two. Great. So that's the method of labeling your image by accepting views. So now I'm just gonna go through the remaining four images and make sure everything is labeled. OK, great. So now all of my images or all of my views are fully labeled. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my training selection. And in this case, uh, the default is 50, and I'm going to stick with that 50. And what that means is that Vidi is going to choose 50% of the labeled views for training, 
and the other 50% will be used for testing and for generating uh, the statistical results. So if I press OK and randomize, the video will go through and pick half of these to be candidates for training. And, um, and you can see which ones are selected for training by this little train icon in the top right, or top left, excuse me. And so now that that's all ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and hit the train button. And this process will take somewhere between three and five minutes. OK, great. So our Vidi tool is done training. Let's just take a quick look at the results. So if I go over and I look at one of these images that doesn't have the train flag on it. So this is an image that Vidi did not use for training. So you can see here that there's two sets of graphics, right? There's the green ones and the yellow ones. So again, the green ones are the labels that I generated. So that's where I told Vidi the characters should be. Um, or that's where I'm suggesting the character should be. And then the yellow are where Vidi is predicting the characters to be. And so you can see that both Vidi and I are, it, are, are pretty well in alignment. Um, if there were any mismatches between the labels and the markings, that would show up in orange. So that'd be a pretty quick way to see that there is uh, some confusion. Another quick way to look at the performance is to open up the confusion matrix. If these, uh, if you see this nice diagonal line, that means that all of the labels match up with all of the markings, and we're not having any confusion between the two. So those results look great. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the performance of my tool. So now I'm going to go back into spreadsheet, and we will tie these results into the WebHMI. So going back into spreadsheet, I'm just going to give the camera a quick trigger just to make sure that I'm getting the results I expect. So you can see. Uh, for the Vidi read tool, the getters are already in place. Uh, and you can see one of them is the string. So you know, if I put in this image, uh, I'm getting that, that string that I'd expect. This is the other card that I use for training. Um, so again, I'm getting that same string, which is great. I also have some cards uh, that have never been imaged before by Vidi that have uh, just a random um, set of characters on them. So you can see that that's you know, reading that string uh, really well. And here's another production card, if you want to call it that. Oops, that's out of the field of view. So let's fix that. So great. So I'm happy with, my, um, with this tool's performance. Now what I want to do is I want to, want to publish some of these results to the WebHMI. And so if I just go over here to my main WebHMI page, this is the default page. Uh, that is built in a job. And so you have some real estate here where you can put some of the data that's specific to your application. So to do that, I'll go back into the spreadsheet. And one of the things I know I want to put out on the WebHMI, for example, is this string. So if I right click here, I have this option to publish. And that'll publish the string. And if I go back over to my WebHMI and I open up my tags, so I go to View Tags. In here, in my task spreadsheet, I have this tag called string, and that's the one I just published from the spreadsheet. So I'll plop that out there, and that automatically populates a, a label and the string itself. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger to make sure we have all the characters in there. The other thing I want to do is I want to allow the operator, for example, to change the graphics. So by default, um, Right now, the, the tool has no graphics showing. But what I can do is I can grab this whole show graphics property and drag it out, out into the spreadsheet. And from there, I can again right click and publish. And again, that, sh that populate, that builds this tag. I don't know if you, show, you saw it pop up in here. But if I go back to my WebHMI, now I can grab this show tag and put it right onto my WebHMI. Um, so the final thing I want to do, this WebHMI by default includes an online film strip. And I want to assign that film strip. I want to make it generate some pass-fail results. And so I'll go back to my spreadsheet. And I want my film strip to show pass and fail based on whether the Cognex logo was found. And so what I'll do is I'll write just a quick uh, function into one of these cells here called get and found. And I'll point it to my patterns tool. And what that's going to do is that's going to be a 1 if the pattern is found, 
And if the pattern isn't found, then that cell becomes zero. And so I can now assign that. Uh, let me just make sure I'm getting, great, I'm getting that. Uh, I'm getting a found uh, pattern. So I'll right click here and I'll set that as my watch cell for the film strip. And with that, I should be ready to go online with my camera and see how it does. So now that we're online, you can see this film strip going by. If I remove the card, you'll see that the film strip starts failing because the pattern wasn't found. Um, I also have this uh, the string readout here, and I can control the graphics. So let me go ahead and publish the uh, or show the um, the graphics for the OCR tool, and we can start testing um, with some of these other cards. So one other thing uh, to make this a little bit bigger of a display, I'm going to go over to the Insight Vision Suite homepage or the shell. I'm going to use this Open HMI button, and that's going to open a Chrome browser with my Web HMI. Great. So this is what we were seeing before. So again, you know, if the pattern's not found, I'll get those failures. And uh, if I pause the film strip, I can review the images that failed. And so now I can start doing some fun things, like seeing how robust the tool is. So if I you know, really skew the card, you can see the pattern tool um, starts failing at some point. But I can do some pretty interesting things uh, and change the, you know, warp the card in, in lots of different ways. And the tool is still able to do OCR very robustly. So in terms of next steps from here, uh, a developer could spend some more time uh, polishing up the web HMI, maybe there's some other things they want to expose or results they want to show, or they want to let operators interact with the camera system in some other ways. Uh, the other thing that we would have to set up would be some communication. So whether that's discrete IO from the power and IO cable, or whether we want to set up PLC communication, that would be one of the next steps to consider. Just to recap, we use the VIDI read tool in our demo application to read these embossed characters on business cards. In terms of workflow, we started by collecting images and setting up the PatMax Redline fixture to create a fixtured ROI for the deep learning OCR tool. We then moved images into the video editor where we did labeling, which is showing the tool where the characters are and what type of character we, it is that we're labeling. We trained the tool and reviewed results to make sure that we were getting good performance. From there, we moved into the spreadsheet where we accessed, using the getter functions, we accessed the result string from the video tool. We then published that result string, as well as some graphics to the WebHMI, and went online with the WebHMI to show how it works in production. Thanks for watching.